The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up, relive some of James and Betty's favorite memories with beloved comedian Tim Conway. So I'm sitting there with these cowboys, and Don comes in, still with the dress on and the things in there. And he's standing there, and he says, Hey, Tim, you got the key to that room? So I said, uh, don't you think we ought to talk about price first? Stay tuned. Life Today starts now. I want to tell you something. You don't know how bad... <laughs> I don't know if we're going to have a lot of people here, and maybe ever again. And it really is okay, because I will bring people, like if we have a, a musical group and everybody wants to see them, and you're going to get to be here with them, yeah. Or maybe we have a speaker or a writer that everybody loves, and you're going to be... But, but for me and Betty, <laughs> listen to me. Okay, let me, let me kind of talk to you just real personal. We not only would like to get our arms around you with no fear of COVID, we want to get God's arms around you and don't miss the next sentence. So you can put God's arms around all the brokenhearted people and the lonely people and the divorced people and the unemployed people and the poor people and the arrogant people so you could get God's arms around all of them and show them clearly how much he loves them. Betty, somehow people believe our family love each other. Mm -hmm. That was one of our dreams. God has made it very clear that he captured my heart to know what his dream is. And his dream is for his family not only to love him and the neighbor, but to love one another. Like the family he desires, he dreams of, gave his son to die that it might happen, raised him to live in us. So Betty, there's a lot of sorrow, a lot of broken hearts, a lot of losses. But God says in Proverbs, laughter is good medicine. Tim Conway, now listen, he went to be with the Lord, but he came here. <laughs> I wish you could see the handwritten note when he met his new best friends, but he really met somebody a whole lot closer. I want you to get ready to laugh and have some good medicine with Tim Conway. He was coming back, he got ill, he never got to get back but to his new very best friends in that one. And you'll hear about that cross in the program, the next program tomorrow. I want you to get ready to take some medicine that will make you better. Tim Conway, right here with us on Life Today. Betty, you and I have been married 44 years. We're getting older. And Tim Conway is quite a bit older than we are. And, and uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's here. Uh, and we are hoping uh, for all of you who are here with, that, that he's able to, uh, to get out to, uh, <laughs> to where we can talk to him. Because, like I said, you know, that, by the way, they did the Carol Burnett reunion, the uh, highest rated show on CBS the entire year. And, and it's good, clean stuff. I like clean stuff. Would you like to welcome uh, Tim Con Conman, if he can get out of here? I'm not sure he can get out of here, but just welcome him. Thank you so much. Oh, is this wonderful? My gosh, it's cold in here. Anyway, 
<laughs> Terrific. Oh, incidentally, you can't buy this in the store. This is the only copy we have. <laughs> yeah, and that, uh, if somebody buys that, I'll take it over their house. So. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing back there? <laughs> oh, it is great, and it's so wonderful to see uh, you folks. Gosh, how many of you saw uh, Harvey and I when we were here in uh, uh, Dallas, or where, where are we? Dallas. Dallas Hall, you went yeah. to Dallas Did 4 you? there. Yeah. yeah. Pretty exciting, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was great working with Harvey. We worked uh, for about eight years. We did kind of a Carol Burnett show type thing on the road and uh, worked with Harvey for eight years. Very, very nice guy to be was with. Was he sharp? Was he really Very on top of, sharp. Huh? Oh, he is bright, but he cannot tie his own shoes. <laughs> That's the point. No, Harvey is a little gullible. He, he really is, is yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I had a lot of fun with him for eight years. Uh, he just, he believes everything I say, which is, uh, <laughs> scary. Uh, <clears throat> he had a suitcase one time, and, and he had a lock on it. You know, when you get it, those locks, it always, the first numbers are zero, zero, zero. You know, that's, <laughs> anybody knows that, but him. <laughs> so he comes to me, and he says, we're in the hotel, and he goes, look, somebody locked my lock on my luggage here, you know, and I, they say, they probably did it at the airport and everything, and I said, well, you know, I used to do a little, uh, bank robbing and stuff. I could... <laughs> Take that lock off there if I want it. He said, you can't. I said, yeah. So I put my ear up to the lock. And I, and I looked at it. I see it's zero, zero, zero. So I opened it. He said, I don't believe that. That is a... So I locked it again. And I turned it. He said, well, no, just leave it open. I said, oh, no, no. No, you don't understand. If you want me to open this again, it'll be five bucks. <laughs> so every time he opened it, he had to pay me five bucks. I made a living out of it. But it's terrific. He is terrific. Louise Duarte, as you know, you've had on oh, the show many times. Sensational. Eight years uh, she was with us. She didn't do anything. She's just with us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but she is. She is a trooper. She really is. Yeah. How was it working with Carol? Oh, terrific. She's the most generous uh, celebrity or star or whatever I've ever met. She was really... We are very, very close. She has an ATM window at her house. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so we don't even have to go in anymore, you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't have to ask her any. She's open on weekends. It's great. It's really, really great. Put the old card in there, get your 20 bucks, and go home. <laughs> Tell me about working with Don Knotts. About Don Bonnie, Knotts Bonnie. and I. Yeah, Don is really the reason I'm in the business. When I used to watch the old Steve Allen show with Don Knotts, Louis I, Tom Post, and the men on the street, and Steve, and uh, I, I just love, we all do. I mean, I can tell by your age. We're all the same. <laughs> I mean, Don, that face, I mean, it just told his whole life, you know, and he was so expressive and everything. And uh, so Don and I did a lot of uh, movies together. We, uh, I wrote a couple for him, for he and I, or him and I, or oh, Don and I, or all of us. <laughs> and uh, we did a couple together, and he's just... Uh, he is exactly, was as exactly in real life as he was on the, on, uh, uh, the uh, show with, uh, what's his name? <laughs> what's his name? No, Barney Fife. Um, and everybody would always give him a bullet wherever we want. You know, hey. <laughs> so he'd throw him in the fireplace. Gee! <laughs> um, but Don is, he's, he was a uh, complainer. And uh, so we were doing this movie for Disney. We were up uh, uh, near Sacramento. It was very cold. And it's cowboy country up there. I mean, real cowboy. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? You like that? So we were, we were supposed to be these dance hall dandies. And we had on these little uh, tutu skirts on and everything. And, <laughs> Uh, stockings and everything, you know, and it was cold out there. So we go in the morning and get dressed in these trailers and everything, and Don would go, you know, Tim, it's freezing in there. I don't understand. Why don't I go to heat in there? <laughs> dressed in there. You know. Freezing, my boy, I don't know. <laughs> so I said, Don, why don't you get, because we were kind of rooming together. I had a room here, and there's a door, and then there's Don in there, so we were kind of together. And he says, I said, Don, why don't you get dressed in the morning in these clothes, go to work, you know, just put a coat on or something, and you don't have to get undressed when you get there in the dressing room. He said, well, that's a pretty good idea, Tim. You know what I mean? <laughs> so <clears throat> the next day, he's all dressed, and I drive because uh, he, I don't trust him. So <laughs> I drive to work. We go. He says, you know, this is really great. You know, this is sensational because I don't, I'm not cold anymore. So we go home that night. A couple of nights later, we go home. He's still dressed like this. <laughs> A raincoat on over this stuff, you know. So I said, Don, uh, I'm going to go to the bar. So, uh, you know, you go over to the room or whatever. He said, okay. 
So I'm in the bar with these cowboys. <laughs> oh, how are you doing? <laughs> Actor, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. Now, Don comes in. He forgot his key. <laughs> so I'm sitting there with these cowboys, and yeah. Don comes in, still with the dress on and the things <laughs> and everything. And I'm at the bar, and I, I go, <laughs> and he's standing there, and he says, uh, Hey, Tim, you got the key of that room? <laughs> so I said, uh, and these cowboys are kind of looking like, whoa, what's going on here? So I said, uh, don't you think we ought to talk about price first? <laughs> just a little angry at <laughs> Okay. Okay, uh, hang on. Uh, I hope you feel better. <laughs> Betty, do you think laughter is good medicine? Absolutely, absolutely. And I hope you enjoyed that and you've gotten the laughter out because it takes the stress away, James. That's, some people are just really down on themselves. And, so, and God says that laughter is good for the soul and the spirit. So. Have fun when you get a chance to laugh. Well, you know, really and truly now, I'm going to tell you, the reason that we, okay, Tim Conway left us not long ago, and you're going to want to, you're going to want to watch tomorrow because uh, something really wonderful happened to Tim while he was here. You know, there's no way you get a handwritten note talking about how you are James and Betty, you're now my new very best friends. You know something, in a way, we want to be, we want to be as good of friends as, as you'll ever have. Matter of fact, we want to be family that you can't hardly wait for the family gathering to be with. I really, I really want you to hear this. Laughter is good medicine, but some people say, I just have such a hard time laughing. I think you just laughed. And Tim's watching. Tim, glad to be your friend, buddy. <clears throat> I hope he can look down and see a lot of people finding out that laughter and a joyful heart is really good medicine. I want you to experience the fullness of the joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That doesn't just mean the happy joy in us, but the fact that we're giving the Lord joy is strength because it pleases the Father to see his family look the way he desires them to look. And Betty, I think one reason we've invited the family into the family room. Now you do know I've been on television um, 52 or 54 years since Billy Graham told a uh, 25 year old that God told him, now are you listening? God told Billy Graham when he's praying alone, James Robinson, 28 year old, needs to be on television all the time. You don't, Billy. James does. You do the Crusades, and James is going to be there every week, ultimately every day, pointing people to you. And he's going to be effective. We didn't know Betty was going to be sitting here, but God did. But Billy knew. It took me five days of prayer. I didn't want to be on television. I had to look at people. I even said to Billy, I'm not an actor. I got to see the people. He said, believe me, they'll be watching well, I'm telling you, you are watching. Now, don't miss this. God wants you to see him and hear the father from this father, grandfather, great-grandfather so you can show the world how much the father loves every one of them. And we, as his family, he calls us his body, we're the only ones that can reveal to the world he gave his son to die for how awesome he is how great his salvation is, how great his love is, the courage and conviction and compassion that he wants to fill us to overflowing with so that we find that everything he says brings healing to the body, the mind, the soul, the spirit. And we can enjoy life more abundantly than anyone could describe it or even imagine it. 
but we can experience it. Betty, that's what our viewers have been doing. And do you know something? The viewers are just going like that. They're saying, we're so sick of seeing the devil's fruit. We're so sick of seeing what the father of lies is producing on God's planet. And the shepherds are allowing the sheep to be slaughtered. And God says, stop it. Don't let the enemy devour and divide my sheep and slaughter them in the womb and cast aside everything that matters for their benefit. Don't let it happen anymore. Stop it. And I'm telling you, Betty, if everybody out here and everybody God's trying to use you to get their attention to focus on him, if we'd stand up right now, we can defeat the enemy. The gates of hell do not prevail against the impact of God's body, his family. Are you ready to stop the enemy from slaughtering the sheep and killing the innocent, even the most innocent? Are you ready to say, this is God's planet and Satan, Satan, you will not walk over us. We have the ability to choose leaders, wisdom, and to pray for a total transformation. That's why we're here. It's not only laughter. It's not just talking about what he says. It's not just carrying the Bible. It's the Bible, the word carrying you in your heart, flowing like a river through you. And you know what you've been doing? When you see the thirsty, you say, we'll give them water. When you've heard me say so many times, if you want your prayers answered, seek to be an answer to somebody's prayers. And Betty, people's hearts are jumping Mm -hmm. and they're saying, I know how much I want my prayers answered. You mean I could be the answer to somebody's prayer? You better believe you can be. And you're proving it. You're saving millions and millions of lives by feeding the starving, (laughs) setting the sex traffic free and giving water to the thirsty and drilling wells. Betty, I want our viewers to go back. You know, we've been doing this 25 or 30 years. We've been feeding longer than that. But I want you to see in the early days when we started finding contaminated water, not just in Africa, all over the world, you're going to see a guy that may look a little bit like me, but he's got cold black hair. (laughs) That's how long we've been doing this. You probably had a little darker hair too. I want you to look in and see what God's love is doing through you. Watch it. You know, it's hard to believe that these children here are actually drinking this water. It's absolutely filthy. As a matter of fact, you can see the cans here that are floating in the water. This is what they were drinking out of when we walked up here. I mean, I want you to look how dirty that water is. This this is what they're drinking. Now, if you can, can see that when I pour it out, I mean, it's just absolutely filthy. Over two decades ago, James and Betty witnessed firsthand a deadly problem that still plagues nearly 800 million people today. Lack of access to clean drinking water that results in waterborne illnesses and oftentimes death. These two little boys, Dominique and Augustine's trek for water, became an inspiration for the ministry as we sought to help those in need of clean water. Their portrait is still displayed at Life Outreach's ministry headquarters as a reminder that it is possible to see wells of clean water spring up even in the most desolate regions in the world. That is what we're after. And that water will soon be clean, a steel cased well, but this is life. This is water for life right here. And we're drilling these wells, two of them every three days. Millions of people are dying for lack of clean water and because of waterborne diseases. Let's give them clean water. Let's give them clean water. Those words have been the heart cry that inspired our mission teams to locate people in countries throughout the world who do not have access to clean water. Places like Eastern Europe, in isolated regions of the Amazon River of South America, into the highlands of Central America, then to countries in South and Southeast Asia, and finally, back full circle to the region of the world where our mission first began, Southern Africa. In response to the need for clean water, Life Outreach, along with our mission partners, have drilled over 7,000 wells. Now, over 7 million people in 20 countries are living a life free from the fear of sickness and death because they have a fresh water well in their village. 
This, this is what love is all about. The fulfillment of seeing Life Outreach International water well right here so that these children can grow up and have healthy, happy lives. If you've helped us do this, thank you so much. James and Betty, I bet this makes you very, very happy. But the need is still great. Let's do this again and again and again till this is the norm in Zambia and in villages all around the world. Cheers. I know you might think, well, boy, you know, James, you started a long time ago going, marching into hell, literally. Everywhere we went, Betty, we were told we'd be lucky to get out alive. Uh, everywhere. And uh, I went fearlessly. You didn't go so fearlessly, <laughs> but you, you went I with went. me. And uh, we saw the need. We had to sell some stuff in this studio laid on the ground for three to four years, just concrete waiting to be tilted up until the missionaries tilted up and built the studio. I said, I won't take any money that would keep us from doing what God showed us. When I saw the hungry children, the thirsty children, I didn't know who would help, but I knew what we would do. And boy, we bet it, I've been doing it. We have never given to something God laid on our heart because we thought we'd get something back. We only think about what that love is giving. And somehow you've been captured by the love of God. You need to understand that those thousands of wells, and please understand, millions of people are getting water, but there are millions of people who have none. And I won't stop praying until everybody has not only water for life, but knows it comes because of the water of life. And many of you are getting that, and it's capturing you. By the way, what you need to understand is hundreds of churches, even hundreds of ministries, all over the world watching life today, have started doing the same thing. And they're also drilling wells. Some of them are drilling very expensive wells that cost $100,000. We drilled one well for a quarter of a million dollars that gives water every day to a half million people. We drill, though, in the villages that the least of these and the unnoticed are in. And you have said, we want to give them water. Many of you say drilling a well is the greatest joy. Of they say they want to drill a whole well. I mean, they make, we live to give a well. And we live to give food. And Betty, we're on television to give water to you, spiritual water. And then you're able to give drinking water. And we point to the water of life that inspired you to give them life. Betty, isn't it exciting what God's people can do? It really is. And every time I see those children jumping up and down and, and hollering and screaming like that with joy, they're saying to you, thank you so much. I might not be here if it hadn't been for your love giving to help drill the water wells. Let's don't stop. There's such a need still. Please join with us again. You know, I've told you, you can hear God's voice out loud. He said, my sheep know my voice. Well, the shepherd just said to me, be sure and tell them that they may not see them here, but one day they're going to see many children who are in heaven who say, thank you for giving me water, but I'm here with you because his love through you gave me eternal life where I will never thirst and where I will be in the fullness of his joy. Thank you. The wells cost an average because we've been able really with a lot of focus to keep the cost at 4,800 a well. We have some beautiful gifts for you. This Bible promises is going to light you up for any gift. We have a beautiful throw that will bless you and it uh, will warm you when you need it. And the bronze of Jesus and the children, that's what you're doing. You're putting his arms around the little children that come. I'm praying God will give us more support right now. I think there's some people watching who could give five water wells I once said, I, I think there's a man in this room who can give 10. <laughs> he looked at his wife and said, we can, and wrote a $48,000 check. Somebody said, tell them that every time. I said, I don't play games. I don't try to manipulate people. I try to stir their hearts. But I think there's somebody who can drill several wells, many of you want. Most of the support comes from people who give $48. That gives 10 people water for the rest of their life. Father, help every person to go to the phone or go online, take their bank card, use it like a check, 
and give what you're putting on it. I, I pray they run to get the card, just like they would run to give a drink of water to a thirsty child or a dying adult because they're thirsty. Would you do it right now? Thank you. Thank you. Waterborne illness is a killer that strikes the most vulnerable. For many impoverished families, the death of a child is the tragic result of having no choice but to drink contaminated water. But with your help, they won't have to make this choice ever again. Mission Water for Life provides clean, fresh drinking water for thousands of children and their families, giving them a life free from the fear of death. With your gift today, you can help drill and establish 350 water wells this year. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five children. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10. $72 will provide for 15. And $144 will help provide life-giving water for 30 people for a lifetime. With your gift, we'll send you Bible Promises for Life, the ultimate handbook to everything God guarantees you in His Word, and a powerful resource that will give you the confidence to face life's troubles. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the I Will Give You Rest throw. It's a reminder of our Savior's promise of rest to those who trust in His grace and love. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well. And you may request our new inspiring bronze sculpture, Let the Children Come. Please call, write, or make your gift online. I, um, I'm just sitting here thanking God for you. Some of you I know are new partners, but you're gonna be a lifetime partner giving life. Some of you have been with us clear back to where I had black hair. <laughs> By the way, Betty still looks the same. My hair's still the same color. <laughs> it is the same color. Your, your hair's amazingly <laughs> the same color. We love you so much. Thank you for helping us share God's love so clearly, so effectively. We'll send you some gifts that'll bless you, but you're given the greatest gift. You're giving life. Thank you. Are you concerned about keeping your family well-equipped to manage your resources when you pass away and leaving a lasting legacy? Contact Life Planning Services today. I think that you have contributed to our health. See for yourself why laughter is often the best medicine. Tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.